What's going on guys? Uh, just trying to do a little update on the condition of this silver Evo, that rusty Evo that I picked up and documenting what I've found so far digging into it. So I removed the front bumper cover and the actual front bumper and took out the headlights. Pretty much about what I expected. A lot of this is surface rust, so it's not too bad. And ideally what I'm gonna do with a lot of this stuff is potentially at least sand it down and then paint it to at least try to keep it from rusting. Um, it's not like a permanent fix, but just something to make it a little better. This bumper itself is still structurally sound. It's just obviously rusty. So I'll probably end up sanding it and maybe sandblasting it and then repainting it. The headlights themselves came out uh, just fine, other than the fact that these bolts broke on both sides. I should be able to potentially drill and tap it. Um, and then also the bolt on the headlight itself that screws to the fender here. Those bolts broke, but that's actually fine because there's just a clip where it clips into the headlight that you can just pop that clip out. So that's okay. The headlights are 100% fine, functional. Haven't dug into the engine yet. Uh, next steps hopefully are gonna be a compression test and a leak down test and before that I might check the timing as well and see if the timing is right. So I did swap seats already. I'll probably do a how-to on that. So I took the seats out of here and I didn't bother putting them back in. I didn't bother putting in the eight Evo 8 seats that were in my black car. Um, so I swapped the seats in. It's kind of dark in here yet and I will do a how-to on that even though it's pretty simple but I'll post that soon. We got our headlights in here. Um, one thing, if you follow me on social media, on Instagram at least, I started digging into the back here the other day. And one big thing, this, this is awful. I mean, it's about what I expected for us, but the problem is when someone just decides to put self-tapping screws to hold down the fuel sending unit because all the studs that would typically hold the unit down are broken off. And then we lift up the carpet here. This is what it looks like, and I'm not too surprised, and I'm gonna look into it, but I don't think I'm super concerned as far as like structural integrity. It is the floor pan, uh, basically, I believe you'd call it. You know, like in the older muscle cars, they replace these all the time because that's where they, they rust. And there's a little bit of rust here where it's enough. Where you see that light, that's obviously a hole straight, a hole straight through. So that's what we're dealing with, with with the rust condition. It's a little surprising to see surface rust even right here. Um, I still haven't dug underneath the car yet, so I'm not sure how bad it will be underneath. But the interior was pretty nice. The seats came out just fine so that's good here's a quarter panel rust i will be most likely pulling the rear bumper off and doing the same thing as i'm trying to do to the front i'm going to take the bumper cover off see how much rust there is and then also take the actual metal bumper off and then sand it and paint it stuff like that anything i can do that's relatively cheap and that will keep the rust from continuing on. And I'm kind of making more work for myself, pulling these headlights out and all this stuff, but I figure I'm gonna run into that issue sooner or later. So right now is a good time to, you know, break the bolts that are gonna to have to get broken and then have time to try to fix them properly if possible. That's about it for right now, I'll probably work on dropping the exhaust eventually too. I might look into the drop in the gas tank, which if you followed my other video blog, you know that drop in the gas tank, I thought was one of the biggest pain in the butt jobs that you could even have on a car like this. But it might have to be done because that gas tank itself might actually be, well, no surprise, I'm sure it's gonna be rusty. So as long as it's not actually leaking fuel somewhere, it could work for a while. But ideally, we're going to try to get this thing going again and try not to spend a lot of money while we're doing it. That's kind of the plan, but 
we shall see. And look at this, that's pretty. I also took the wheels off and swapped on a different set of wheels. These are the same wheels I used for spectator racing. I had, you know, an extra set. So I put these ones on, took the other ones off, changed out some of the lug nuts. Uh, some of the lug, old lug nuts were just rusted and getting crappy. Again, no surprise. So before they could cause any more issue, I took them off and just threw them away and then added some better OEM lug nuts. And some of this stuff up front too, it doesn't look as bad, you know, as it could potentially be as far as this radiator support doesn't look too bad. There's some rust in there, but that, you know, structurally sound up there. This part too is probably the worst of it. It's definitely not good, but it's not gonna just fall apart anytime soon. And the frame rail itself up here is pretty good. Again, I'm not an expert at what is going to be the most structural part of this where I really need to watch for for rust as far as what needs to be taken care of, but I'm just kind of guessing and paying attention, trying to figure out where it is rusty that really would need to be fixed. So that's it guys uh, just wanted to do a little update on the condition and actually just document this uh, so hopefully one day when it's a lot cleaner under here i'll have some footage to throw up and compare and show you how ugly it once was and and all that fun stuff so that's it for this update video guys as always this is paul from boosted films saying thanks for watching